first, I think. They turn in their personal property stuff on March 1st. Personal property is what Oh, May 15th, sorry. Yeah, I really I'm going by assessment date. The assessment date is March the 1st, but I, I think those forms are due in by May 15th along with personal property because we used to get them in the same package. You get their, you get their assessment and their, their form. Oh, I'm wrong, though, because it's like 30 days after the first of the year that you're going to. Okay. That was a long time ago. I do not. I know that we've sent out uh, um, notices to all the, uh, the current... That's the beginning of the year. I know it's not from May. Okay. I know the form where they say, I said I was going to do this, mm -hmm. but I did this. The compliance. Yeah, compliance. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, at this point, we have no further discussion on the uh, public hearing. We will close the public hearing and open regular council meeting. Mark Gatton appears that you're up first. Thank you. Thank you. Back in November, uh, the sheriff and I had came for two new Ford vehicles. Uh, right after that meeting, that deal yeah. fell through. The price increased by $2,000 a vehicle. Uh, did some research. Could no longer find any leftover Crown Vicks anywhere throughout the United States. So coming back to you today, to request to purchase two new Dodge Chargers. Uh, per vehicle cost is $24,492, and we're asking for $2,000 per vehicle to properly equip the vehicles. Uh, in the past, we haven't had a lot of requests for equipment and vehicles due to the fact in the early 90s the Crown Vic came out, we pretty much used a lot of the same equipment throughout all those years. Uh, we're going to replace two of the vehicles in our fleet, each with over 100,000 miles. And since December, we've put 1,267.53 in one of the vehicles. And the last one, we just had some transmission work on it, was approaching $400. That's beyond our normal maintenance. So the request is to replace those two vehicles. Which two vehicles are they on this? Which one do you have, Paul? The end of the December. Twelve thirty-one eleven. Could be number eighteen and nineteen. Mark, are you guys feeling comfortable with the, these chargers going to hold up? We are now. The Indiana State Police, you know, switched over, right. and they've done a study compared to what they were running in the Crown Vic. They're averaging just over two mile a gallon better than the Crown Vic was. Well, I, if I remember right, when, when the sheriff got his first one, it was kind of a trial. Correct. You know, and he really doesn't drive it like the rest of the. Correct, and I'll be honest. As I told you before, I wasn't sold on them in the beginning, but. The state probably abuses theirs worse than well. That's why I'm worried. So. You know, the state <coughs> ones the guys are driving. They they're yeah they're they holding up. Did you price any Chevys or is just that's still not out, Mr. Bayman. Chevy still hasn't got the QPA pricing out for any of their new uh, Caprice. Who will service these? That will probably have to be ran into Fort Wayne, either Glenbrook, I haven't talked to the managers out here, if it could be done over here in Columbia City or whether that would be a violation of the, the maker of the vehicle's rules because I know Chevy and Ford can't be in the same showroom together, so I don't know if they can service Dodge warranty work here or not. But the new owners are building the Chrysler building in Warsaw. Okay, did not know that. It's under construction. I Mark, not that we're not happy to see you, but why isn't the sheriff here asked him for the cars? Uh, due to a medical emergency in his life last week. Thank you. Uh, another question I might have would be, in years past, which would be a number of years ago now, but uh, the commissary, I believe, always did, they always come up with money out of the commissary to do the light bars and all that in years, years past. I don't know how far back now I... I don't know, Glenn. Uh, 
I know at one point we took a little at the end of the year when we had left over and bought some radars out of a garage fund. Yeah, I just was asking if there was money someplace maybe to offset that. I didn't know. Not really right at the moment, there, yeah. There. <laughs> but I know in years past that they did come up with the money to, okay. for light bars and stuff. Yeah. 24,492 is state bid price. Yeah, that was the lowest. I got three three different bids in Highland. Uh, our Thomas Dodge out of Highland, Indiana was the lowest. And Dodge works a lot different than Ford ever does. I mean, Dodge car pricing, you're paying, everything's extra, spare tire's extra on Dodge's pricing. But you gotta pay attention. You gotta pay attention and it still is way under the new Ford police interceptor they build on prices. Is anybody around there then yet that you've heard of? Not around here, no. I know okay. the state police tested the Chevy, but they're not released yet for... If um, 18 and 19 are being replaced, which two cars, which deputies are going to get these? You can just give me the numbers if you'd like. Uh, about which cars we're going to switch out to the back? Yeah. Well, number eight. And number 13, with hopes and plan that those cars will last two years out back as reserves and spares. <clears throat> Who's going to drive these cars? The new ones, Jim? Uh, that would be Scott Schmidt and Corey Patrick. Now, with Corey Patrick, he's only got 46,000 miles on his, but you have, um, and I understand the Port Explorer, you probably wouldn't want to swap that out, but some of these have 80,000 miles on them. Why would you put a car with 46,000 miles in reserve and keep an 80,000 on the street full time? Because it, it's been drove by Denny Rue, and as you can tell, it's the, it will be the oldest car then on the road, 07, but Denny maintains his. has been around a lot longer, yeah, and maintains and takes care of things. I know that car's still safe for him to drive. He's used to it. Uh, you know, he's planning on retiring at the end of this year. That car will be out of service then. His is also a slick top, so if we move it to the back, then we're going to have to pay a fee to have a white bar installed on it and some of the other equipment removed. And yeah, on Mike Ingalls, the other Ford Explorer, I know how he drives and, you know, feel that that vehicle can make it another year yet, even though it has 92 on it. And Corey's, this is only costing $12.45 per gallon. So it just, it would seem to me as we'd want to replace one of the ones costing up to $18. That's mileage. Yeah. Miles or, oh, okay, so that makes sense. The, uh, your, our original allocation and the deal that fell through was for what in dollars and cents? Jen was going to look it up for me. I did. Um, you appropriated 66 for um, police cars out of King Cab, which is a discussion we had yesterday instead of CETA money. We were switching out because you already had appropriations. And we only have spent 4000 to place the motor on the car that flooded out this year. So you're still looking at about So these, this would come out of King Cat. The, yeah, the, okay. the letter just, it says seed it, but it okay, good. meant to say <laughs> King Cat. Yeah, I'm sorry, I should have explained that. I hadn't even gotten to that yet. Yeah. So. Okay, okay. I, I, because I never got a question or an answer to my question one other time, do, do we ask that these guys keep a long sheet or anything as far as checking the oil fluids? Yeah, we. The full-time guys don't have the log sheet. The ones that sit out back, they have a log sheet that has to be filled out daily. Uh, I think I understand your concerns. In October, we had the radar company come over from Ohio and do our cars, and this was a new company we used, and I'll just reiterate that this guy stated, he said that we had some of the nicest, cleanest cars that he's ever been in for radar research. So the guys are taking care of them. 
just know which ones are good and which ones aren't by who's driving. Jenny, you said how much was appropriated last fall? 66, and we've spent um, four for the replaceable motor on police cars out of King County for 2012. Jennifer, with that, that appropriation we approved in what, November or whatever you were November in November 4th, 7th, somewhere in that area. Was that supposed to come out of last year's appropriation, <coughs> last year's money, or was that supposed to be 2012? 2012's. Okay, so, so that's not a big deal then. No. Okay, thank you. Are these are these chargers going to be when the time comes satisfactory for the K9 cars? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and these cars will be the Sheriff's Association finally got on board within the last year about so many councils and commissioners griping about the two-tone paint cost, and uh, they're recommending either just the single tan or white. I believe we're going to get white because there's no charge to it, so there'll be a change in the fleet color over the next three, four years. So they were, they were charging a little extra for that one, even that one tone tan. If it was a specialized, yes, if it wasn't a factory paint, if it was off colored from a tan, they were charging anywhere between five and nine hundred dollars. Because they can. Because they can. <laughs> <laughs> This was presented to the commissioners. Do you have their approval on it? Yes, we do. The commissioners did uh, favorably, we favorably uh, recommend it. Entertain a motion for the allowance of the. Uh, yes, I, I move we approve this request. We appreciate only two vehicles this year. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Those opposed? Thank you. <laughs>